Hello and welcome to the EdTech Chat and Chew podcast, the podcast where four passionate teachers from different parts of the country get together on their lunch breaks to share resources, tips, and ideas to help you empower your students. Each week, we'll do our best to inform and inspire you with the amazing things that are happening in our schools. We're very happy that you've joined us today. And now, here's your host, Diane Smokorowski. Welcome, this is EdTech Chat and Chew, episode number five. And I am Diane Smokorowski. I'm tech integrationist from Andover, Kansas. Always with me is Mike Soskill from Pennsylvania. Hello there. Karen Balbier from El Paso, Texas. Howdy. <laughs> and Andrea Keller from Irving, Texas. Hi, friends. And we're excited to share with you some updates this week on our Valentine's project and also share with you our researching of our latest um, education books. And so I'm going to toss this over to Karen, who's going to tell you a little bit about the Valentine Project. Can you hear the announcements? All right. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me over that. But um, our virtual Valentine's Project is a project that we came up with together. And it's a, a really nice little collaboration if your students are looking for some geographical awareness and a cultural understanding about how other cities, states, countries celebrate Valentine's. And you want to learn a little bit about um, learn a little bit about what they're doing as well. What I think is awesome is that it started as a tiny little project and right now we have 81 classrooms registered. Yay! And um, what's even more exciting is just watching all of, you know, we were hoping to circ circumnavigate the globe and I think we've we've done that. <laughs> we've done that. Um, so I, I think we have a, yeah, we have a classroom from China, Brazil, Colombia, um, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Spain. of course, the United States, yes, but I mean, it's just, it's just really nice that we can connect our students with um, other countries. Most definitely. And uh, go ahead, I Mike. Just wanted to, one one oh, thing I wanted to say is that you can still register, and we're going to put that in our show notes, uh, up until the 31st of this month, so it's not too late. Fantastic. And, you know, Mike and I, we were working on the map to kind of plot out all of these places and I'll tell you as another one came in another one came in it just <laughs> was too cool to see how you know how broad a project if you just throw an idea out there can make happen and so this very soon we're going to start linking up classrooms and so yeah definitely come join us we're excited to have you okay let's talk about education books I'm a fan are you guys fans of course yes. absolutely <laughs> I mean, I really am one of these people who can't get enough of ed education books, teacher movies, teacher articles. I'm, yeah, I really probably need an intervention. But <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. And today we're going to be sharing with you some of our personal favorites. Let's see. Um, Andrea, why don't we start with you? And So I'm going to do my number three first. And I have to say, my one that I'm reading right now, well, actually it's on my Kindle, which I love well, not my kingdom, but my phone, is Reality is Broken, Why Games Make Us Better and How They Can Change the World by Jane McGonagall. What I love, though, is that, yes, it's on the Kindle, so I can read it on my phone, but I also got the little whisper thing, so this way I can also listen to it while I'm out doing my 500 in 2014. So it's been nice to be able to listen to it and um, have it on my phone. That's my Fantastic. Talk. Okay, number three to you, Mike. Uh, well, I read this book. I read this book over a summer vacation a couple years ago and it absolutely changed the way that I thought about teaching and how we use textbooks in schools. And the name of the book is Lies My Teacher Told Me and it's by James Lowen. And he's a former uh, textbook editor uh, for history textbooks and he talks about the textbook adoption process um, from different states and also about how, how facts are put into textbooks and uh, things like the story of Thanksgiving or Abraham Lincoln and how most textbooks have a lot of facts wrong to make, mm -hmm. uh, to make the textbook politically correct so that it gets adopted by different states. It was absolutely eye-opening for me. It was fantastic. I, I can't recommend it highly enough. Interesting. Very, very cool. I'm going to have to check that one out. Uh, and Karen, what's your number three? Okay, so um, all the three books I'm sharing are in progress, by the way, because I read lots of different things at one time. <laughs> so the one I want to share is called Spark. It's the Revol Revolutionary New Science of Exercise in the Brain by John Rayleigh. 
And uh, I'm really into it right now, just learning about the brain and how um, exercise, you know, it makes makes it healthy. But um, they do they do talk a lot about learning in the brain and exercise and um, some of the things that are happening when uh, physical education programs are going out the window and how important it is for students to be active and learning at the same time. So um, it's a really good book and it's a good listen. I'm actually listening to it on an audiobook. Um, really easy to follow while driving. <laughs> a great book and it. It just, like I said, it, it makes you think more about being very kinesthetic, too, with, um, with uh, your teaching if they are cutting physical education programs. Yeah, Karen, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, a couple years ago, um, I believe that Diane was with me at ISTE. I don't know if you saw John Medina's keynote address in yeah. 2010 at ISTE. And our, one of the things that really stuck with me, I mean, he's a brain scientist that wrote Brain Rules, uh, was that in order for the human brain to properly function, it needs to be in motion, in changing meteorological uh, meteorological conditions uh, outside, and that kind of ties into exactly what Karen was saying about that book. So that's that's really cool, and I definitely want to want to check that out. Mm -hmm. It's good so far. I like it. <laughs> well, our kids need to be up and moving. Even we don't like to sit for very long, so it makes sense to try to do right. as many of those things as possible. Okay, so here's my number three: is invent to learn. Ooh. Um, it is Making Tinkering and Engineering in the Classroom by Sylvia Lebo Martinez and Gary Stogger. And this is all about the Maker Faire movement in the classroom. So 3D printing, hands-on construction, a lot of things that Kevin Honeycutt is doing. Mm -hmm. It was a free book when it first came out and now it's around 30 some dollars. <laughs> but I will tell you that it's it really opens your mind to the idea of why do we make kids just make PowerPoints? Why do we just have them make brochures? Why mm -hmm. aren't they making models? Why aren't they making other constructions to really see something in a bigger mindset? So I really am enjoying that one. All right, number two. Back to you, Andrea. Uh, number two is Untangling the Web by Steve Dimbo and Adam Bellow. And I love this just because I'm a new ITS and it's this has so many great ideas to use in my classroom or to share ideas with um, teachers. Very easy to read. Um, just little great little um, anecdotes to use in the classroom. Love it. Too fun. Okay, Karen. All righty. My next one is Start With a Why, which is uh, by Simon Sinek. And it's how great leaders inspire everyone to take action. And uh, I think that uh, during times of, uh, I'd say, when I'm discouraged with my job and what I'm doing from all of the expectations and things that are um, added, right, um, I think this helps me because it, it helps me remember why why I'm doing this, why I became an educator, um, and uh, instead of the what, what I have to do. And so. It's it's been good really really so far for my soul. Like I say, just um, listening to other great leaders and how they're inspiring people, and just to stay focused on the why. Awesome, Mike. Uh, my number two is Why School, which was written by Will Richardson. It is available only on uh, Amazon right now, uh, but it's only two ninety nine. And basically, Will talks about his son and how the internet has changed the way that people learn and how students now have access to information in a way that they never did before and how because of that we need to change what we do in school in order to stay relevant. And it's one of the books that I required for the grad class that I'm teaching right now. Uh, they have to read three books over the course of the year uh, as we meet. We're meeting kind of as, as a professional learning community. But that was the one that I felt that they really should read before they started choosing the other books uh, in order to, to get a view of how they want to grow as an educator. Fantastic. I won't have that. You guys, my, my reading, my Kindle's going to fill up real quick here. <laughs> uh, number two for me is the updated version of the project-based learning book by the Buck Institute. This last summer they published a new version of it. And, and I know you guys probably are familiar with this already, but while I am using things on my phone, when I travel it works really great to read on planes and so forth. I love the fact that I can make annotations in here with the mm -hmm. ahas of, oh yes, and don't forget yes. this idea and so forth. So my whole life is kind of built around <laughs> kids to laugh on my phone. But if you are interested in project-based learning, I love this book, not only for ideas, but it really asks you to consider the big picture, such as if you're going to do a project, have you thought about budget? Have you thought about um, who will be the extended outreach from this project and so forth? Absolutely fantastic. Okay, number yeah, one. Yeah, before, before, you, before you jump up, uh, yeah. jump, jump uh, for the last round, Diane, 
Uh, Buck Institute for Education, if anyone is interested in project-based learning or problem-based learning, they're an absolutely fantastic resource. As a matter of fact, the two resources that I usually give when people ask me about PBL are uh, Buck Institute and um, the Life Practice Model by Kevin Honeycutt and Ginger Lumen. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Good, good pieces. All right, number one, Miss Andrea. My number one favorite book is The Dot and by Peter Reynolds. And the reason being, it's all about making your mark um, and seeing where it takes you. So the reason I love it, though, too, is because every year they celebrate International Dot Day, where they invite people to make their mark and see where it takes you. And people all over the world have participated in this project. And, that, and the story is so great. It's great to read to a kindergartner. It's great to read to a, to a high school student. And it's one to remind me that I need to remind everybody to make their mark, because you never know. You just have to believe. You just never know. I agree. I, it is such a great book. And the projects that you've done with that over the years have been amazing, too. So great things yet to come. OK, Ms. Karen, number one for you. All right. The number one book I'm reading right now is called Finding Your Element by Ken Robinson. Um, and there was actually a book prior to that about the element. <laughs> but um, it's kind of been a nice one for me right now because, again, still looking and searching for my element. I think I'm in it, but I think it's constantly evolving. But it also talks about helping your students find their element and their passion, what they're into, and um, how to help them develop that. So kind of nice. Love it. Okay, yeah. Mike. Yeah, actually, that was, that's my favorite education book of all time. And I was going to share the element by Sir Ken Robinson. <laughs> Uh, but since uh, since Karen stole it from me, I'm going to talk wait, about wait, a different book. This, this one is Finding Your Element. It's written after the yep. element. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. well there, there's <laughs> one, more, one more thing that has to go on my reading list then, because uh, <laughs> Ken Robinson's The Element is my absolute favorite uh, education book of all time. And the, the idea of passion-based education and that kids will learn more, be more engaged, uh, have an overall better experience in school if they are doing that which they're passionate about is something that appeals to me. Because I know, I'm, right now, I'm passionate about math teaching. I, I love math. You know, the award that I won was for math teaching. And I know in high school, I was not a very good math student. I got a C- minus in trigonometry and never took uh, a math course my senior year of high school because I didn't think that I was very good at it. And so talking to kids about following that which they're passionate about and finding it early on so that they can learn through that passion is something I think is really important. And it was Sir Ken Robinson that opened my eyes to that. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. OK. Um, Mike, what is yours then? Uh, well, that was number one. But I, I, uh, after I thought that it was stolen, <laughs> a, book that was, a book that was recommended to me by Ginger Lumen, which I haven't read yet, but I'm really interested in reading. It's called The Underground History of American Education by John Taylor Gatto. And the quote that jumped out to me uh, when I looked at the reviews on Amazon was that the purpose of our school system has more to do with control than learning. Mm. And that's something I, I worry about, that often we're trying to control kids and not give them the autonomy that they need in order to follow their passion or, you know, really get the most out of school. And so I'm kind of interested in seeing the history of our school system and, and see how that evolved. And I think that book will open my eyes in some ways. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So here's the one that I'm reading now is How Children Succeed by Paul Tuff. And it talks about grit, curiosity, and the hidden power of character. This is uh, probably a book that's kind of a buzz right now because after mm -hmm. the PBS Ed Tech Talks that they had later earlier this past year, it talked about grit as one of those talks. And I see a lot of conversations across blogs and Ed chats and so forth about how do kids have grit because those who have grit succeed. And I've just started exploring into the book. I'm reading with a couple other state teachers of the year. So I'm excited to delve in a little bit more and see if I can even, because I really want to know if it's just kid grit or does there need to be teacher grit? Mm. That's my ultimate question. So I will be, i give you more later as I read on. <laughs> yeah. That sounds good. OK, well, I think, friends. I think there's going to be some great conversations about all these books as we go oh. forward over the next year or two and, and meet every Monday. I, I think that what we read is going to have a very big impact on our conversations. Oh, most definitely. Exactly. You know, what's really interesting in most of all of our reads that we've chosen here is that passion is a common thread. Yes. yes. So important. And, and we are passionate people about what we do, as we think every teacher should be, whether you're, you're in your element, trying to find your element, or you're discovering, you know, how can I make children understand their mark on the world? 
-hmm. there's a passion that goes behind that and that's why we get into teaching friends that's the best part of the whole gig exactly exactly all right so it's time to wrap up what's for lunch Andrea uh, it would be homemade guacamole and chips <laughs> that looks good that my, looks amazing my old parents are professional from, from uh, last year I've worked with this for years she goes come here Keller I got guacamole Yay! <laughs> Karen, what's for lunch? Chicken and broccoli. Yay! Hey, that's a good solid choice too. Mike? Uh, I had a salad, but since I'm teaching a professional development course after school, I also have this green concoction, a uh, neutral blast that is spinach, bananas, apples, uh, coconut water, and flaxseed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does it taste good? <laughs> Does it, it taste like good? Ah, all right. Awesome. Well, I had my green stuff for morning breakfast in my smoothie this morning, so today I'm, I'm opening up a can of soup. So that's it right. for us today. Okay, friends, we'll see you next week on EdTech Chat and Chew. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us for EdTech Chat and Chew this week. We love getting together to learn from each other, and we're happy that you were able to spend a little bit of your time with us today. You can make sure that you don't miss an episode by subscribing to the podcast on iTunes or to our YouTube channel. If you enjoy the podcast and you got a few good ideas today, please take a second to leave us a review on iTunes. Leaving a review is a great way to let others know about the show. Show notes and more information about topics from today's episode can be found on our website, edtechchatnchew.weebly.com. If you have questions for us or would like to give us some feedback, Drop us an email at edtechchatnchu at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll try and get your questions answered on future shows. On behalf of the podcast team, I'd like to wish you a week filled with all of the amazing things that make teaching the greatest job in the world. Make sure you join us next week when we discuss the ins and outs of attending and presenting at educational conferences. See you next time. Until then, keep on learning.